give a warm welcome to Pete Capella and from Sonic and Shadow the Hedgehog, please give a warm welcome to Jason Griffin, everyone! Thank you so much for being here today. I, I don't think we've ever had fog machines go off. For this is a first. That was really yeah. cool. <laughs> well, you guys are rock stars, and we treat you like rock stars, and that's why we're, here. we're happy that you guys are here. Um, you know, and thank you guys for being here at, at Ultra Gaming Expo. Obviously, a, a big, big deal to have you both here. So I have. Can I, can I say one thing before we start? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. So I have some questions. Remember, audience, think of your questions. I'm going to come out and get some questions from you guys. But I'll start with Jason first. Jason, it's been a while since you've done Sonic recordings. Did Sonic change your life? 100%. Um, as I say, I would not have a career today if it weren't for Sonic. And uh, I thought it was the most unlikely thing that I would be cast as such a popular video game character. Especially because the week before I had an audition for something called Shaman King and didn't even get a call back. So the same studio brought me in for Sonic the, a week later and I said, oh, what are the chances? This is not going to happen. And then I got a call back and I thought that went even worse. And then I, I got the part. And then the entire time I was recording the series, I'm like, well, today's going to be the day they fired me. And it never happened. But instead, I got to meet so many great directors, so many great actors, so many great content creators, and I have a career because of it, so it has um, immensely changed my life. Well, we've, we've really enjoyed you being Sonic, but we've also enjoyed Silver the Hedgehog as well. So, Pete, I have a question for you. You actually originated the role of Silver. And was that a massive amount of pressure to step into such an iconic video game series? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was a gamer kid, uh, was obsessed with, you know, Ms. Pac-Man and stuff like that. Like, I'm, I'm an old man. So, uh, to take on the role of a new hedgehog was just, it was mind-blowing at the time. Uh, and I hope I did him justice. Uh, did okay. Did I was fishing for it and I landed it. I was fishing for it, it and I landed it. Right. <laughs> Now, I have, a, I have a, a question for both of you guys. How did you guys, uh, and, and, and I mean, uh, the, you know, Jason, you kind of touched on it, but how did you guys audition for these roles when you went in for them? So I uh, did my very first anime about a month before I auditioned for four kids. I had never done cartoons before, and I worked with a guy named Bill Timoney, and to this day, I still thank him every time I see him for my career. Uh, it was just a very small part in this anime, and he said, you know what, you're really good at what you do, you should audition for Fox's Saturday morning lineup, uh, Saturday morning cartoon lineup. So basically, he got me the audition for Shaman King, and we went from there, you know? And it, again, I'm asked so many times how to get into voiceovers, how to, how to have a voiceover career. I never plan on it, I, so I have the worst advice. <laughs> Uh, I just had fun doing it and took the opportunity to, you know, do my best work. Uh, me? Uh, I was, so for that same company, it was Four Kids Productions, and uh, I was acting in New York and doing improv comedy in New York, uh, and it was the onset of the internet being used in casting, and so my voiceover reel was up there, but I had only done radio and, like, lots of, like, lame commercial stuff. Uh, you know, at one point I was the voice of Visa, uh, which no one cares about, right? Uh, and so, for his Productions got a hold of my demo, and they were like, hey, we want to bring you in, and they kept bringing me in for uh, all these big bad guys, like these deep voice, like Ninja Turtle bad guys, and Pokemon bad guys, uh, and then I was on my way out the door one day, and, like, literally, the door was open, I was stepped out of it, and they are like, oh, pee, pee, pee. Like, do you want to try this 15-year-old hedgehog? And that was the thing that broke me. So, uh, actually, I want to stick with that. Um, why is Silver so mad? <laughs> hey, man, he had, like, a really messed up future because of the people in Sonic's present. Kind of like we're going to have if things are going, uh, you know, keep going that same way. So, he came back to kind of fix 
things, but he had a chip on his shoulder. Was, was that, you know, when, when you went in to do the role, were they like, yeah, he's going to be angry, so... Yeah, they did say, like, so he, they told me he was a 15-year-old hedgehog, and he, he, they, they, I think they literally used the words, had a chip on his shoulder about his future, and um, I, at the time, had a, a, a little brother who had a chip on his shoulder, and I just kind of channeled him a little bit, like, what would he be like if he were a hedgehog? Uh, can, can I stop for do, do something yeah. real quick? My mom just texted me and she said, where are you? So, can, uh, when I go like this, can everyone say, hi, mom? Is that cool? Okay, here we go. Hold on one second. Oh, oh hey, mom, I'm just at a convention, so... Uh... <laughs> they all wanted to say hi. I couldn't stop them. Thank you. <laughs> Give them a round of applause, everyone. She gave me life. Yeah. Yeah. I give her a shout out every now and then. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, I, I, I want to know, you know, when you went in to do Sonic, um, how did you end up landing the role of Shadow? So, I uh, have very vague memories of this, but I was recording an episode of Sonic X, and uh, an engineer who worked at 4Kids named John came in with a picture of Sonic. And, you know, a little, I think it was like a paragraph, like the sides was just, the audition sides were one paragraph. And he said, do you want to audition for this? I said, of course. And um, I went in, and as you do, they give you the description, you see the picture, and I started thinking, like, what kind of voice would this character have? And at the time, I had a roommate named Carl, who was a chain smoker, and also an author. And all he would do is smoke cigarettes and talk about his books. So I thought, oh, that's Shadow's voice. I'll just try it. And so I tried it, and probably, I want to say like a day later, they're like, yeah, you can do the part. <laughs> so I got to do it. And then Shadow the Hedgehog was the first video game I ever worked on. Really? Yeah. Uh, they brought in the script. It was the size of a phone book. Um, it was weeks and weeks of recording that, and I, again, was thinking to myself, this is amazing, when are they going to fire me? When are they going to realize it's just me, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that was... That 2010, that's the answer, 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, man. Too soon. <laughs> so I have a question for both of you. Sonic is known for his catchphrase, gotta go fast. If Shadow and Silver had catchphrases of their own, what do you think they would be? What do you mean, if? Chaos Control! And Silver's isn't a catchphrase as much as it is a meme, but he's got one too, and everyone, what is it? It's no use! It's no use! <laughs> well, that's weird to hear an echo back and forth. <laughs> this is the first year that we've been able to hear the echo back Yeah, before. it's cool. I've like never it. had that. <laughs> so, um, I guess... Uh, for both of you, Sonic has had such a large fan base, obviously. Um, how do you guys navigate the responsibility of representing, you know, such iconic characters, especially as you go out to, you know, conventions and stuff like that? What was the question? That's a really great question. I'll answer, answer it, and then you, you'll know what the question was. Uh, it is a big responsibility, representing the characters, uh, and... I don't know, I think, uh, I think Jason and I, well that's why we like going out together, to be honest, is like, uh, I think the Sonic universe is fun, and the fans make up the universe, and so uh, I know that when we go out, we're just going to have fun with the fans, and that's what makes it fun for us, yeah. too. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, I, I, think, I, I hope they keep going on with the movies and the cartoons, and I hope it, the universe keeps expanding, uh, because the fans deserve it all, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm so amazed that this even exists, and that anybody is remotely interested in meeting me. Because, as I tell so many people, I, I recorded all this stuff like 20 years ago, and then it just all went away. And I figured, well, that was that. It was awesome. Um, and just recently, it was said, told, oh no, people, these conventions, they'd love to meet you. Yeah. And um, some of the stories I hear from people, just things you would never realize, how you changed people's lives. Um, it's really touching, and it's something that I never expected. Um, but I'm so grateful that I get to actually do this and tour around and meet people who can tell me their stories and how it's made such a huge difference in their lives. 
and, and I didn't understand it at first, but then I realized that when I was growing up and things were bad at my house, I would watch Full House. Yeah. And I would imagine, oh, I'm part of the Tanner family, and that was my place to go to when things were bad, and I, I wanted to just escape. And, I was, and then, then I got it. I was like, oh, okay, so Sonic is someone's full house. Yeah. Well, we're, we're all happy that you guys are here. Uh, I'm going to go out now to go get some questions from you guys. So oh, you're going to raise your hand, and I'll be able to ask you your question. But while I go out there, I have one last question for you guys that you can answer while I'm out there. Silver has telekinetic power. Sonic has super speed. If you had their powers, do you think you would use them for good or evil? Wow. I mean... That's a great question. And what it is good and what's <laughs> evil these days, you know? Answer it honestly, Pete. Uh, I, I, I think I'm a pretty good dude. I think I would use it for good. For sure. Uh, I would just, I'd want to never have to take a plane ever again. I'd just run everywhere I need to go. Oh, you mean you wouldn't have to sit at DFW Airport for 14 hours? It was a fun 14 hours. Oh, man. Hey, have you guys been to the Dallas uh, Airport? Try going for 14 hours. <laughs> awesome. We, we have a question right up here. Go ahead. Ready? Say your name and your question. My name is Jenny Diaz Obedo. And what was your favorite scene from the movie? Wait, first of all, is your name Julian? Jaden. That's Jayden. my name. What's that? Jaden. 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 Cool name, dude. Yeah, it's a really cool name. Um, my favorite scene from the movie. I'll let Pete answer this one. <laughs> that means Jason hasn't seen the movie. <laughs> I, I, I did. You did see the movie. Uh, I think uh, when they first when 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 uh, when they first meet Sonic is my favorite scene. I think it's really funny. It's really good. That's a good. That's a good answer. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jaden. Thanks, Jaden. You're awesome. All right, right over here. Go ahead, sir. Hello, Mister. My name is Xavier Contreras. Uh, may I ask you the question? about the Netflix, about movie, about... No, I mean, that episode Sonic Prime. Do you know Sonic, he likes chili dogs, but he likes sea dog, right? Okay, so, so what was your question? If, if yeah. Sonic likes chili dogs and dogs. Yes, like I saw Netflix. <laughs> like I saw Sonic, he broke a lot of a chaos. A lot of diamonds because a lot of world because I saw nine he's tails but tails doesn't want Sonic want to stay green hell yeah so does he like chili dogs yes <laughs> what's the simple answer to the chili dog question I, I will answer this we both enjoy a good chili dog but only if they're vegan that's correct fact you got it Xavier we got a question right over here Which quote uh, from 06? My, that's a pretty snazzy performance there. <laughs> My, that's a pretty snazzy performance there. <laughs> Thank you. You got it, dude. <laughs> Thank you for being you, man. All right, right behind him, we have another question. Whoa, it's literally Tails. Is it Tails? Yes. Hi, Tails. Hi, Hi Tails. My name is Xayu. Um, my question is, what is, okay, so this is more directed towards Jason. What? 
voicing more, Sonic or Shadow? Well, um, it, it's funny because Sonic is easier to do for me in loud situations. Shadow has to have a microphone in front of his face. Uh, so I kind of like doing Sonic better because he cuts through. It's just easier to talk like this than it is like this. Believe it, it, this is much harder on the throat than this is. And it wouldn't seem that way. It's no use. Hey. <laughs> you guys witnessed a theft. <laughs> All right, right over here in the middle. Hello, my name is Luis. I'm a huge fan of the Sonics franchise. And I'm gonna ask you how both of you met each other. Ooh, that's a good question. Pete, Pete, I know and Jason doesn't. Because uh, there was a time when we were recording 06 and Jason was on his way out and I was on my way in. And they said, hey, will you guys both step into the booth? and do some background voices. So Jason and I recorded, that's how we met, and we recorded together. Jason doesn't remember, because I'm not memorable. I in have his no eyes. recollection of this. Uh, but we did, yeah, and, and I, the whole time I was in the booth, I was like, this is really cool, I'm with Sonic. But then we got to hang out a couple years later in Dallas for uh, what was my last convention for about same yeah. 13 years, yeah, yeah. So, which was a blast, even though nobody showed up. It wasn't like this. It was like the front row here and a couple real hedgehogs. <laughs> and that, that's actually true, right? There were yeah, that's a true story. Hedgehogs. Actual yeah. hedgehogs. People had Tupperwares of hedgehogs. They're like, oh, can I just run them around on the table? <laughs> Do you want me to sign one? I don't <laughs> <laughs> All right, right here we have a question. Uh, my name is Elian. Elian. And my question is for Jason. Uh, did you ever have managed to find that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? <laughs> yes, it was in my junk drawer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right in front of him we have a question. Uh, this is for Pete Capella. My name is Destiny. Hi. Um, I like that you said my first and last name. That was cool. <laughs> um, out of all the games that Silver has been in that you haven't voiced, is there any other one that you would like to have voiced? Every single one of them <laughs> is the answer to that. I mean, look, uh, I'm, I couldn't be happier that there are other amazing voice actors doing Silver's voice. Um, but we... You always want to play these characters, right? Like, I brought Silver to life. I certainly didn't want to lose him. All right, up here we have a question. You found the cool guy with the coolest shirt I'm in here. I could not stop staring at this shirt. Yeah. Dope, dude. My name is Carlos Santiago, and my question is, which is your favorite game out of them all? Ooh. Uh, my favorite game out of them all... What, no, 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 where did that come from? <laughs> Sonic 06 because of what it meant to me, because it was Silver's birth, but I also love uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. I think Sonic and the Black Knight is really cool. Was, was there a cutscene where Silver's being birthed in that game? <laughs> yeah, you didn't see it, but... Uh, um, uh, of the games I voiced, I like Sonic Unleashed the best, because I really... Yes! Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I feel like I actually got the voice at that point. Like, I, I understood it, and then they fired me. But, <laughs> my favorite game that I wasn't in is Sonic CD, because I was a big fan of the Sega CD back in the early 90s. So, the 1990s. Not, yes, not the 1890s. <laughs> All right, right here in the center. All right, we have a question. Hi, my hey. name's Pat, and I have a question for the both of you. Cool. Uh, what did you all think about when you heard Sonic was going to have a love interest in 06? Ooh. I said, I hope this is Lacey Charbert. Charbert. <laughs> um, I hope whatever, whoever Sonic loves was in Party of Five. <laughs> uh, quite honestly, that, it's not something that they told us about or we knew in advance. It was like this. Oh, hi, Jason. Stand over here. Here's the script you've never seen before. Say these words. Now get out. <laughs> and you've got an hour to do it. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we weren't really even made aware. 
I, you know, it was my introduction to the world, and it was such a weird thing. Even when I said uh, uh, I finally found the Iblis trigger, they never told me what Iblis trigger meant. I just said a, two weird words. Uh, so yeah, I, it was. It, I think they were like in a, a rush to get the game out, and there was also so much dialogue that they didn't have time to explain storyline yeah. to us. They never do. It's it's very brief. Whatever they say. So is it possible that you said Nimbus Trigger incorrectly? No, I do everything <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we have a question right up here. What's your name? Vanessa Lopez. Hey, hey, you look cool. What's your question? Jason, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. What was your part I got it. from recording Sonic X? My favorite, favorite part? Favorite part? No, yours. My favorite part? Yes. Um, there was an episode where Sonic is wheeling around a girl in a wheelchair, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I don't. Um, but I remember that was the first time I made the director actually laugh. There was a line that I did. I think Sonic's about to accidentally dump her over a cliff or something, <laughs> if memory serves. Um, and I did some sort of react that actually got a big laugh. And like right then and there, I was like, oh, I, I love doing this. Awesome. Right away. Go ahead. Chun Li. Hi. Hi. Jolie. I said Chun Li. Oh, Chun sorry. Jolie. <laughs> sorry. I can't hear. <laughs> this is a question for the both of y'all. Um, who are y'all's favorite side characters in the series? Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, because then we're uh, making people side characters uh, too. Is, is Bokun? <laughs> I remember there was like Boku and Bokun or something like that. They were robotic. I just like how cute the Chows are. Yeah, yeah. He's my favorite side piece. Side piece? Hold on. This is a whole different uh, convention than I thought it was. This is Echicon, right? No? Okay. Sorry. The, the, the group in the back. <laughs> uh, I hope that answered your question. I just liked saying Boku. I also, I, I know that Tails shouldn't be considered a side character, but Tails is awesome. Yeah, for sure. All right, we have a question right up here. Sir, what's your, what's your name? Dominic. Dominic, what's up? What is your question? I have three questions. Whoa. All right. Whoa. First one. I want to hear what you what Sonic's voice act sounds like. Well, it sounds like this, of course. Okay. But it, it started like this. Oh man, I'm not in Sonic Prime. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> wow, I'm sorry to crush your dreams. The last thing I want to tell you is my favorite dream on Earth. Oh. Sign my Sonic plushie. I think it can happen. <laughs> He'll sign it for you at your table. Huh? Yeah, we're doing we're doing sign signing. We take pictures together. We can do videos. Okay. Yeah, dude. Awesome, man. Run away. So we have another question right over here. Go ahead and stand up if you can say your name and your question. Oh, hello, my name is Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi. So I had a question. It's probably silly, but I wanted to know if you guys ever thought about making a Sonic movie? I hang out with Jason every question. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's heard it all. Though. So you mentioned before that you guys like did a lot of Forkids voices, and there's like a commercial with them singing the national anthem, and I wanted to know if you like remember it, but also how you feel about it. I could never forget it, because every single 4th of July, someone tags me in it and reminds me how horrible I sounded. I did not want to do that, but they're like, do you want to get paid today? So I sang the National Anthem. I didn't uh, get to voice the National Anthem for four kids, Does everyone so want to hear Silver feel, sing the National uh, Anthem right now? Right up here in front of you. Hi, my name is Honey. Nice to meet you. Hi. My question is, uh, what's your favorite Sonic song? You heard their favorite Sonic song? Can I ask? Song? Can I ask a question? Where'd you get those awesome pants? I made them. Oh, so cool. Uh, I like Super Sonic by Jamiroquai. <laughs> <laughs> Mine obviously has to be Dreams of an Absolution. Has to be. It's the only answer. And the 
only one I know. So you can't see this, but he actually has uh, some fuzz underneath his jacket. I can see it. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, well, it's a question for both of y'all. It was kind of like the same one. What are your favorite non-headshot characters? In the Sonic universe or just in general? Uh, in Sonic universe. Non-headshot characters that you love. Maria, the maid. Voiced by the great Mike Pollock. Oh, right. Blaze is a cat, and I have to say Blaze. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we have another one right here. Name and question. Hi, my name's Roxanne Hernandez. I have a... This is, um, Valentine's Day is coming up. I was wondering, like, what about uh, Sonic, Shadow, and Silver would say as a pickup line to pick up in, like, their loved ones? <laughs> I I'll tell you the one uh, pickup line I know in Japanese. Translates to, yo baby, what's your phone number? Uh, I obviously, Silver, I, I thought of a good one for Silver. Hey, hold on. I think I see you in my future. And Shadow, of course, would say, would you like to control my chaos? <laughs> I think Shadow would just hold up a gun and be mine. <laughs> Damn it. All right, right in front of her, we have another question. Uh, my name is Enrique. Hey, hey man. Hi. Got your question? That's okay, I forgot the answer. Uh, what did they do to get you to voice the werehog? They said you're voicing this werehog. <laughs> and uh, it was painful because, as a lot of people know, I was sick when I was recording that. So I really had to push hard in order to not sound sick. Uh, but those werehog screams, man, those were... I could taste blood. When you hear the werehog screams, just know that Jay Griff is tasting blood. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, Lisa Ortiz... Uh, Amy Rose just texted me and wants to know if I can get a bite to eat. Uh, can we can we just say hi to her real quick? Yeah. All right, wait, hold on. Ready? Uh, three, two, one. To say hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? You want to get a bite to eat? There's, a, there's great places here in South Texas. Let's go. I cut him off. All right, we have another question right over here. There we go. Jared Moran. Hey, dude. It's, it's not even a Sonic question. It's literally just like a general question. Great, I love those. How do you like become a voice actor? Like, I, don't, I, don't. I think that's a great question that I love to answer. Uh, first of all, uh, oh, and it's always luck is how you book roles, but I think the most important part of the title voice actor is the second word. It's knowing how to act. Yeah. It's taking acting yeah. classes. Because when you're voice acting, it's harder than on-camera acting, or it's different. But you're bringing to life a character without motion, without eyes, without face. Um, so you only have one tool, and that's your voice. And so to learn how to act and really uh, uh, be a part of that character, really encompass that character, is so important. And that's that's acting classes for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say as a voice actor, your best tool is cold reading, because one thousand percent of your job is going to be here's something for you to read right now uh, that you had no preparation time, maybe like five minutes. So my best advice, what I did growing up, is just read out loud things that you're not familiar with, the newspaper, um, you know, also imitate people. I imitated my entire family growing up. Hey, do, a, do an impression of me. It's no use. I mean, no, of me. It's Pete. Hey, I'm the coolest guy in the room. Uh, All right, that is it. That's <laughs> it. Now, now. And record yourself and listen. Listen back to it because... You know, the, the recording doesn't lie, and that's what other people are going to hear. 
So you can hear yourself as you're talking, but if they play it back, if you play it back, you can pick up on things you like or you don't like or what you want to improve on, and then you can actually start developing characters, character voices. And I say like challenge yourself by doing things that you know you can do and then do things that you're like, I know I can't do this voice or that voice. Try it. Because that's when some of the greatest voice acting, I think, comes out. Like when I did Usopp, I had no idea I was going to even audition with that voice. But uh, the weekend before was Memorial Day and my friends and I were all in the park and someone took a picture of me like this and I had a bag in front of me. And my friend saw the picture and said, oh, look, it's Eddie the Troll. So I'm like, what would Eddie the Troll sound like? Oh, Eddie the Troll would sound like this. Oh, that's a bag. I've got a bag. And so it just happened that the next week I have this audition for Usopp. And out of nowhere, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that voice for it. You know, if I hadn't just been screwing around and having fun, I never would have had that voice in my arsenal. So... Just have fun. You have know? fun is a big one. Have fun. Yeah, don't take it too seriously, because, man, 99% uh, of a, your job as an actor is being said, being told no or being told nothing. Yeah. Like, we audition for so many things that it's like, it doesn't just shoot off into a void where nobody hears it. And then every once in a while, it's like, oh, you booked this job. So... Also, hey, I have one, one thing to add before you ask uh, Shadow his question. Uh, the only thing that you can bring to a role that no one else can is you. So don't go and try to be Jason doing Sonic or Pete doing Silver. Go out and do you doing the character. And yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Like yeah. bring them to life how you can. All great advice, guys. Give them a round of <laughs> He didn't mean a word. <laughs> Everyone do the best Jason. <laughs> so I don't want to alarm you, but I do have Shadow the Hedgehog here. Well, father? <laughs> Brother? Camila Diaz. Camila, and what's your question, Camila? Who is better uh, between Supersonic Shadow or Silver? Who is better? Ooh. Silver, obviously, because he has youth on his side. Oh, who's That's <laughs> right. She adjusted it. Who's stronger? Who's stronger? Oh, stronger. I assume Sonic is the strongest of them all. Yeah. He's the center of the Universe, right? Yeah. That's a good question, though. I carry this franchise. <laughs> you didn't know how evil and vindictive I could be. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed. <laughs> All right, we have one more question from the audience. What is your name and your question? Hi, my name is Jimena Ramirez, and I was wondering, what was y'all's reaction when you first heard about the live-action Sonic movie? Uh, oh, I can't wait to be in this. Yeah, we just kept checking our text messages and emails, <laughs> reaching out to our agents, wondering whether we were going to be in it or not. Yeah. That, was, then, that was the first reaction. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, the guy from Parks and Rec is great, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good show. All right, really quick, Billy, before I let you guys go, I have a couple of rapid-fire questions. Yeah, I love it. That I want to see if you guys can answer. Uh, someone already asked your favorite Sonic game of all time, so I'll pass that one. Uh, if Sonic, Shadow, and Silver had a dance off, who would win? Sonic. Ooh, wow. Sonic. Silver because he's. Well, Sonic because he said so. <laughs> I think Sonic because he's the fastest, right? He would have such fast dance moves. Yeah, it would be like Super Sonic Breakdance. Yeah. The pizza topping, Sonic, Shadow, or Silver's preferences? Oh, vegan chili dog toppings. And the hopes and dreams of the youth. <laughs> and extra sauce. Sonic, Shadow, and Silver team up for a karaoke night. What song does each choose? <laughs> so you don't know this, but Jason and I love karaoke. Love, love, love karaoke. And now the end is near. And so I face Pete Capella. <laughs> So apparently it's Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Uh, Sonic's chili dogs versus Shadow's favorite snack or Silver's apples. Which do you prefer? <laughs> well, we're uh, we're vegan, both of us. So the apples. Finally, I win one of these. <laughs> and last but not least, if Sonic, Shadow, and Silver formed a superhero team, what would the name of their team be? <laughs> uh, this blue silver blur. 
was the worst answer you could possibly give. How about the Revengers? <laughs> Well, we love that you voiced the Revengers, and we love that you were here. Guys, please give one more big round of applause to Pete and Paula, and of course, Jason Griffith, everyone. They're going to be at their table. They're going to see you guys out there, so make sure you guys visit them. Give them one more big round of applause, everyone.